What's up guys, Trav White here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about what not to do when growing your hair out. Five mistakes that I see a lot of guys make. Let's get into it. Now before we start, this video is sponsored by the subscribe button. It loves to be smashed, so hit it as hard as you can and it's free too. I'm sure there's a sex joke in there somewhere, but I just, I can't think of it at the moment. But smash it up because 86% of you guys who watch my channel are not subscribed. So it would mean the world to me if you could at least get this bar graph to 50-50. So let's try to even that out. Hashtag road to 50-50. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, let's jump into it. I'm gonna go over five mistakes that I see a lot of guys making when they're growing their hair out and what you can do to fix them. So the first mistake is over buying supplements and hair growth gimmicks. So this is usually what happens. A guy decides that one day he's going to, without putting a whole lot of thought into it, say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna grow my hair out. Maybe he saw a picture on Instagram or he saw a celebrity in a movie and was like, I want that hair. Or maybe he watched my channel and was like, yo, that dude's hair is dope. So then he starts growing it out and quickly realizes how long it's gonna take. So he starts Googling how to grow hair faster. All of a sudden he's buying biotin pills and doing rice water baths and rubbing castor oil all over his scalp and taking hair vitamins and buying horse shampoo because he's looking for the shortcut. But the reality is he spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars on gimmicks and marketing. Depending on his hair type, he could actually be damaging his hair in the process. So not everyone needs to use a hair oil or a horse shampoo or vitamins or supplements and definitely not for hair growth. So if you wanna know how to use hair oils for healthy hair, I have a whole other video on that, how to properly use hair oils, the ultimate guide to hair oils. I also have a video on rice water and if it's legit or not for speeding up hair growth. I'll link to everything in the description. But here's the reality guys, there's no shortcut. It's a journey and you have to have patience. I do have another video on how you can speed up hair growth to a certain extent, but there's a threshold to it, right? I'll link to it down below too, but the quick version is if you're not deficient in any nutrients, the most important ones being vitamin A, all the B vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E, and zinc, iron, and protein, and you're sleeping well and you're well hydrated, there's not a whole lot you can do to speed up hair growth any faster. But if you're not doing those things, then you can speed it up to that threshold. But you know, you don't need to supplement those nutrients if you're already getting them from your diet. So you're just gonna have to have patience. And this is usually where most guys give up. They get about four to six months in, realize how awkward their hair is getting and that they'll have to stay in that awkward phase for at least another six months longer if you have curly hair. Sorry to my curly hair bros, but they wasted so much money on these supplements that didn't work and then they end up cutting their hair because it's not happening as fast as they expected it to and they don't want to have the patience to get to the other side. So do not give in to these gimmicks. Eat healthy, get enough sleep, stay hydrated and enjoy the process because that is how you're going to make it to your goal. And if you need extra help, then that's what my community Mannered Means is for. It's on Facebook, it's my Facebook group. So you guys cannot feel like you're on this journey alone. It's full of knowledgeable men who are all on their hair and beard growth journey. So come on over and join us there. That was the first mistake, buying into gimmicks. Let's move on to the next one. The second mistake, this one's more sciencey, but the second mistake a lot of men make is they are over conditioning their hair. So what does this look like, right? What does this mean? So it's a natural instinct, I think, because I did this too, is the thought that, oh, my hair's getting longer. I must need to use more conditioner. And that's actually not 100% true. And the main reason you don't want to over condition your hair is to avoid cationic buildup. So this is kind of where the chemistry comes in. So what is cationic buildup? So in every single conditioner, there are several ingredients that chemists put in to add slip and to add shine to your hair. But the main ingredients that give your hair that conditioned feeling, you know, that slip, that softness, and that shine are what's called cationic surfactants. So cationic just means that these surfactants have a positive charge and your hair 
has a net negative charge at the pH environment that it naturally sits in, which is around a pH of like four to five. So your hair has a negative charge by nature. So these positive charge cationic surfactants work like magnets and they bind to your hair. And this is really, really good for, you know, damaged hair or dry hair because you're naturally adding moisture and these emollients back to your hair, which can help repair it. And it's also really good for hair that's just been shampooed because everything has just been stripped off. You know, the dirt, the grease, the dead skin, all of your natural sebum has been stripped from your shampoo. So you use a conditioner to replenish this moisture, which is great, it's a good thing. And there are two types of cationic surfactants that you'll see in conditioners. These are quaternary cationic surfactants and cationic polymers. So quaternary cationic surfactants include ingredients like behentrimonium chloride, behentrimonium methyl sulfate, centrimonium bromide, centrimonium chloride, sterile conium chloride, dicetyl dimonium chloride, guar hydroxypropyl trimonium chloride. So these are mouthful, but these are all different cationic surfactants that you can find. And most of these are not water soluble, but water solubility doesn't really matter because these are bonding like hardcore to your hair. So if you imagine magnets, you know, the positive end of the surfactant bonds to the negative charge of your hair and it's a pretty tight grip. It's like giant magnets. It reminds me of that scene in X-Men when Magneto like binds all of the X-Men to that metal wall. And yeah, that's pretty much how strongly that these things are binding to your hair. So next you have cationic polymers like polyquats, you know, things like polyquaternium 4, polyquaternium 10, polyquaternium 11, etc., etc. And these ingredients also have a really tight grip on your hair and don't rinse off that well despite being water soluble because again, that bond is really strong. So these polyquats are really good at frizz prevention and they're usually in both shampoos and conditioners. They're in shampoos in a little bit smaller amounts. So all of these chemicals are actually, you know, really good at conditioning your hair, but buildup and problems occur when you start to condition your hair like kind of daily or condition it multiple times in between the days you're shampooing it. So each time you condition, you're just adding another layer and another layer and another layer of these really tightly bonded surfactants and polymers and it could start to build up. And these are much harder to strip off than say like a silicone buildup. So a lot of people ask me, you know, since they don't shampoo every day, is it okay to just use water and conditioner on the days in between? And I say no for this reason, because conditioner buildup is a thing and then these cationic surfactants can build up on your hair. Some problems that can arise from this are things like your hair will start to look really sticky and stringy versus like smooth and flowing. And it will also start to look really dull and matted versus like shiny and vibrant. And if you have curly hair, your curls will just have no bounce. You're just gonna get weighed down. So don't overdo the conditioner, only use it on days that you're shampooing. And if you want to fight frizz in between wash days, then look for like a leave-in or a light spray or like a lightweight oil, like an argan oil. So these are more emollients and the formulations in these serums are much lighter than what's found in like a really moisturizing conditioner. And the amount of cationic surfactants are not as much, so it's not gonna build up as badly. So if you do already have this buildup, then you can get rid of them by using shampoo with sodium or ammonium lauryl sulfate or sodium C14 to 16 sulfonate. Those anionic surfactants, which is the negative charge, are really strong and have shown to get rid of the cationic buildup the best. So let's move on to mistake number three. The third mistake is kind of the other end of the spectrum, and that is over shampooing. So once your hair starts growing, your day-to-day -day tends to get hotter, <laughs> right? Like hair is naturally meant to insulate and protect you from the weather and the environment. So the more of it you have, the more insulation you have, and especially if you live in a hot weather environment, and then add on top of it, let's say you work out, you sweat daily, or you have a labor intensive job, you might think that you need to shampoo every single day. You don't, you don't have to do that. You might be thinking, you know, well I sweat, so my hair is dirty and I need to shampoo it. No, <laughs> just take a blow dryer, put it on the cool setting and evaporate that sweat your hair probably doesn't need to be shampooed, especially if you just shampooed it the day before, because there hasn't been enough oil buildup in the last 24 hours. Because when you shampoo your hair, you're not just getting rid of odor and dirt, you're also stripping your sebum, which is the natural oil that your scalp produces. And the more you strip your sebum, the more your scalp needs to produce. So over the long term, you could be causing your scalp to produce more and more oil because you're stripping it daily. However, 
in the short term, you could actually run into the opposite problem. So over shampooing could be causing your scalp to be too dry or too itchy or too flaky, especially if you have a naturally dry scalp already because you're constantly stripping that sebum every single day. Additionally, most drugstore shampoos contain really strong detergents in them. So unless you're really, really aware of like what your hair type is and exactly how your hair responds to which brands, because every brand has a different formula, even if they have the same ingredients, formulas differ from brand to brand, like the amounts, the percentages, things like that. So, which most guys aren't aware of which brands, they just grab whatever one that's on the shelf. Unless you watch my channel all the time, then you're gonna know. So shampooing with a really strong detergent daily could lead to scalp irritation, could lead to brittle hair, it could lead to breakage. So I would suggest shampooing and conditioning every four to six days, depending on your natural scalp moisture levels. If you have naturally greasy hair, maybe every two to three days is fine. And if you have really dry hair, you could potentially go up to a week without shampooing. I typically go every four to five days. So if you're sitting there like, yo, what the heck is my hair type? How do I pick a shampoo? I have a whole other video. I have multiple videos on that on my channel. So just go look at, I'll just link you to one right now, the ultimate guide to men's hair types. You can watch that. You can also download my free hair type PDF, put it in the link in the description. So let's move on to mistake number four, and that is over brushing. So this one is actually a big one. And let me start by talking about, I guess, what causes breakage. So according to the Chemical and Physical Behavior of Hair, which is a textbook by Dr. Clarence R. Robbins, hair breakage is basically caused by two competing factors. That's really high friction on the hair and really low strength of your hair fibers. And the main cause of friction is combing and brushing. Now it's not the only cause, but it is like the main one. And the majority of the time it's from brushing or combing through knots and tangles. And you're forcing your hair through like that. So this doesn't mean don't brush. You do need to brush to get knots out, but you can also overbrush and you can also brush too harshly. So the goal is to make brushing your hair easier and gentler and find the right balance of how often you need to do it. Once or twice daily, max. Also, curly hair brothers, brush your hair when it's wet. That's the only way because the more curl your hair has, the more friction there is on the brush, which equals more breakage. Now, the straighter your hair is, the less friction. So the wetter your hair is, the straighter it gets because it's weighed down and you can brush through it a lot easier when it's wet. So for my straight and wavy hair guys like I have, you can brush when it's dry or when it's damp. I actually prefer damp. And this is because of this graph I found from the textbook that shows that with wet hair, the combing load is initially very strong, but then it decreases as you move the brush through the hair. So with dry hair, the combing load starts off much lower, but then right when you get to the ends of your hair, the combing load spikes. And this is because the ends of your hair tend to wrap around the bristles, which increases friction and curvature, which increases the chances of breakage. So I like to brush when my hair is a little damp, and I also like to use a little bit of leave-in conditioner to add some slip. And this will decrease the initial you know, stroke force going into your hair, and it'll also decrease the chances of the ends of your hair wrapping around the bristles. So when I'm brushing my hair dry, I'll start with a wooden comb, and I'll detangle the ends of my hair first, and then I'll switch to my wooden tech brush with the wooden pins and I'll detangle from scalp to ends. So doing this will definitely decrease the chances of breakage and it's also much easier to brush through when your hair is damp with a little bit of conditioner in it. So when most guys brush their hair, they tend to just stick their brush in and <laughs> go full force from their scalp to their ends and just kind of bulldoze through that thing. The goal is to be able to gently brush from scalp to ends without any problems. So, brushing once or twice a day, brushing really gently, and curly hairs, brush when it's wet, straight and wavy, brush when it's damp or dry, and use a little bit of leave-in spray. My favorite leave-in spray to use is the Milk Oil from Daviness, and I'll link to it in the description. And finally, mistake number five is that too many men are kind of obsessed with using a hair oil. And look, I'm gonna keep this one short because this has been kind of a longer video, but not everyone needs a hair oil. If you have a naturally greasy scalp, you probably should stay away from hair oils. If you have dry and frizzy hair, then yeah, you might benefit from them. But which one should you get? You know, it's important to know what hair oils do what because they don't all do the same thing. I would recommend watching my ultimate guide to hair oils before you decide if you need one or not. For example, the only time that I use a hair oil is right before I shampoo. I use a little bit of coconut oil to penetrate the cortex of my hair for protection because I have really fine hair and it breaks really easily. And that's it. I don't use a hair oil 
any other time really because my hair doesn't need it. Yeah, so you don't need hair oils for a million different things. Like it's not gonna speed up your hair growth. There's really no evidence for that. But anyways, I'm gonna end it there. Those are the five mistakes that I see a lot of guys make. So yeah, yeah, like don't do those things. So <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. So, sorry my hair. My mouth's dry, I don't have any water. Sorry. <clears throat>